Hi there. Today we are going to look at how we set up and use the powerboat routing in PredictWind. The powerboat routing is set up to find the most fuel efficient or comfortable route. The algorithm takes into account the drag of the boat in the water and the windage. For the, in the water it's using the wave, the different wave states, so uh, wind wave, primary swell, secondary swell and tertiary swell. And it's also going to use uh, tidal and ocean currents to find you the best route. So let's get started and have a look through it. So we come over here onto the main menu, click on weather routing and then power routing. So the first thing we need to do is set up our boat type and parameters. So we come up here to routing preferences and we click on that and then we can come down here and we can set up the parameters of our boat. So the height uh, at the top of the wheelhouse or you know flybridge, uh, we want to basically we want to know the frontal area of your vessel. Uh, so we look at the height uh, off the waterline and we can put our number in here for whatever that height is. Then we want to know economic boat speed. So this is your cruising speed. Um, most boats if you are going a longer distance you will just have your cruising speed and so this is your economic boat speed uh, and then we come down here and at that speed in flat water you will know what the uh, RPM is that you'll be using. So we put that in as well. And then the fuel consumption uh, litres per hour. And um, you should know that number too. And so you'll need to put all of these figures in uh, so that the router can use those in its calculations. And then we need to look at the actual uh, boat type so that we can model that. Uh, so we want to know the displacement in tons, the waterline length, the beam and the draft. And so let's just have a little look. If I click on this button down here we can see what they mean and, and so that explains what they are. So take if you don't know these exactly, take the, your best guess uh, because it, we do create a 3D model uh, of your boat from these parameters. So we can also in here add uh, a depth contour so that uh, the router will avoid this depth. So you know two meters or five meters. I don't want to go anywhere shallower than five meters. I could click on that and that's what the router would obey. I'm going to leave it at two meters um, and then the tidal and ocean uh, currents I could choose an ocean currents model I'm just going to leave it on the Mercator um, but the thing to note here is that we also have tidal currents the whole way around the world that this modeling is using and so where the tidal currents are in effect it will use those but um, once we're on the ocean we use the ocean currents and uh, makes a big difference to your route. So you'll see up the top here that we are optimizing for fuel consumption um, and so the router is going to use the your wind, the wind effect on the boat, the wave effect on the hull and the currents to give you optimized route and from that we're going to get a whole lot of other parameters of how the boat behaves in on that route and we'll be able to analyze that. We can also change the router. It will still be uh, trying to do, you know, be fuel efficient in the, in the manner of the wind and the waves and the currents, but it's also going to try and avoid certain conditions. So into the wind, upwind, reaching, going across the wind, so beam C. Uh, and then you know downwind running with the the winds uh, we can we can try and avoid those you know downwind we you know you might actually want to have have that a bit higher um, and then wave heights so this is our combined wave height so into the wind 
uh, beam and running uh, following C, you know, downwind, uh, we can change all these parameters and it will try and avoid these conditions. We'll just stick with the, the fastest and most fuel efficient route for now and then we'll look at the outputs. So we've got that all set up. I'm going to leave my extreme weather warnings on and I want the map to follow the boat when I'm animating the route. So come over here to power boat routing. I can change my start, sorry, start up here. I can change my start waypoint uh, and my finish waypoint. And there's a few things I can do here. I can click on uh, this waypoint icon up here and I can see the lat long of where each of these points are. And I could enter those numbers off my plotter. Um, I could click on this button here and it would take me to where I am. You can change the, the waypoints in here. So once we're happy with our waypoints, in here we could change our start time to in the future. Uh, also what, what time zone we're in, we can change that. Um, we would use this if we were looking to run a route for when we were gonna leave, let's say in the morning or later in the day we would run our route, we would change the time or the date. I'll just set it for now. We will then close that. We'll come over here, click on the download button and wait for the route to be calculated. You'll see here on the screen already, we have our GMDSS warnings here and here, and we can click on those and see what, what they're talking about. And you'll see here, here's the highlighted part is the warning for our area that we're looking at. We could look at that more closely if we wished. Um, if I zoom in on the map here, you'll also see I have a weather warning on my route, so I will click on that. And so we've got a warning for roll and vertical acceleration. So we'll have a look at what they are uh, in a minute. Um, but you'll see that I've clicked on that and for much of this route, right through to here. So let's see how far through that is. Basically for the next 24 hours, uh, I would have that warning was, was, was set up, which is not surprising when I look at the, the bigger picture there. We've got our route all set up, um, but we wanna come and, uh, we've got some warnings there, and so we wanna understand why that is. We will actually go and look at our tables So we're coming here into the tables and we're actually going to go to a graph um, and you'll see here we have the wind speed for our, our route, uh, the true wind direction along our route. But what I really wanted to come and have a look at was down here at these warnings. So really high levels of roll here, well above our threshold of anything above four. So that warning that we saw that for basically the first half of our uh, passage that we ran there you'll see there that we have the very high uh, roll in RMS you know so rolling our boat around so very uncomfortable and we probably wouldn't want to do this this route now that we've uh, run this routing for it. Again vertical acceleration you can see here we're above the 0.2 threshold so vertical acceleration is you're lifting up and down and this is potentially going to cause seasickness and just be generally uncomfortable with our roll and vertical acceleration you can see they match up we do have a little bit of boat slamming this is your boat um you know bashing over waves and again not something that we really want to see but let's go and have a look at our other parameters um that we have so let's just go to the summary and get a better idea of, of, this, of this route and the things that we can see in our routing. So we have, across all the models, the uh, amount of time that it's going to take to do the route. It's not very different. Uh, the models are all pretty much in alignment. Um, you can see the fuel consumption in litres is 781. The distance travelled in nautical miles our average speed and our passage time come down here and we can see our wind speeds but what I really wanted to look at was the amount of time that we were punching into the wind the amount of time we were going across it which is why we probably have such high roll levels you'll see here we are 
reaching across um, and then running with it uh, we don't have a lot of a lot of time so a lot of time on a BMC again not ideal we don't uh, spend any time in wind against current which is positive it's a good thing we have this time uh, above four degrees RMS of roll 62 percent of the time you know and our vertical acceleration as well because we're in a lumpy C state so not ideal and we can further see this in the wave section this would not be a passage we would want to go on we can come back to our map and we can have a look around here from what I can see of the tables all of those models we're very much in agreement. I can flick over to another wind model here and we can run our route through and you'll see it's very similar to the last one. We can come over here to the wave map and have a look at what the wave state looks like and you'll see as we come out of here and we are it's sort of on our um, front quarter and then it comes a little bit further round as we go along the route and I think it was about here that we started to see the warning move away before but let's just go and check out the currents and you'll see we do actually have some pretty light currents there but nothing too strong let's have a look you know 0.3 of a knot of current we come down here and we're really out of it we're missing the Gulf Stream there let's just zoom out and have a look at that you can see there the Gulf Stream, so we're well inside that, and uh, we're not in the part of the coast where we're going to get hit by that. So yeah, so we would not be doing this journey, uh, mainly because of the sea state. What we could do now is we could actually go and have a look at departure planning and try and pick a different window.